What's up everyone, in this week's video we're going to transform this into this. We were able to make this 3D model with our self-built CT scan by using the exact same Python code real CT scans use. How is this even possible? To answer that question, we first have to know how a CT scan works. I went to the University of Antwerp for answers. So guys, we're here at the IMIC Vision Lab at the University of Antwerp in the CT scanner room. This is Jens Renders, PhD student at this faculty. He works on CT reconstruction algorithms. So this entire big box is just insulation so that we don't get x-rays onto us. But currently, you can see the light is off, so that means there are no x-rays. So I can open the door and we can take a look inside. There's three important components to a CT scanner. The first one is this, the light source. This is just like a lamp, but it shines x-rays instead of visible light. The second is the detector panel over there. This is a huge array of detector pixels, and each of those pixels measures the intensity of the x-rays arriving at that spot. And then the third component is this, which is the rotation stage where we put an object in the path of this x-ray beam. And when we do that, the object casts a shadow onto the detector, which we cannot see with our eyes because x-rays are not visible, but they are visible on the computer. And if we look at those shadows, we see the object as if it is transparent, because most objects are transparent to x-rays, which is why we use x-rays in this uh, CT scanner. And so such an x-ray shadow is exactly the same as a um, x-ray radiograph you get at the hospital when you break a bone, but this is not yet a CT scan. A CT scan makes such a projection at many angles, which is why we have the rotation stage. We rotate the object and we take a projection at many angles and then we use mathematical algorithms to reconstruct a 3D image from that. A 3D image is made up out of billions of voxels with unknown intensities, unknown gray values. And each projection gives us uh, many linear equations about these unknown intensities. So to find the unknown 3D image, we just have to solve a huge system of linear equations with billions of unknowns, which modern computers are good at with modern mathematics. So correct me if I'm wrong, essentially you pass an X-ray through the object, which produces a shadow on the detector with different intensities in every pixel, depending through how much material you actually went. And by doing this at every angle of the object, you can calculate the exact position of each material within the object. Yeah, exactly. Do you think it's possible to scan this and make a 3D model out of it? Yeah, I think this would give very nice pictures and a very nice 3D model. Okay, let's do it. So we can already see something here in the X-ray shadow which we couldn't see with our eyes, which is the nails inside the boat. X-rays are on from the source and it's taking the scan right now. All right, so we have made the reconstruction or the computer has solved the system. Um, and so currently we can see the glass bottle and the rope around it in 3D. Um, but we can also slice the object, because this reconstructs the entire interior of the object. And so we can see the boat that was inside of the bottle. And I guess we can also see some nails. I guess these are some nails inside the boat, which we couldn't see. We also did CT scans of a chess piece and a mouse, which resulted in very nice 3D models. Back home we want to do the same thing, but with visible light instead of x-rays. Therefore relevant models can only be made from transparent objects. Instead of turning around the object, like medical CT scans do to get every angle, we turn the object itself around to get every angle, using a record player. As a light source, ideally a point source is used. So I use a smartphone flashlight to create a shadow on a white wall. Then you have to make sure the light source and rotation axis are in line with each other and perpendicular with the wall. 
After this, we need to measure the distance between the light source and the rotation center, the distance between the light source and the wall, and the height of the light source. We have to set up the detector, which is a smartphone camera with fixed settings, at an angle, otherwise we would always be blocking our light source. Now the actual scan can be performed. First, a measuring tape is placed before the camera, which becomes important later in the code. Then a rectangular object is placed against the wall to be able to correct the angle at which the camera is filming, also later in the code. After this, the actual scan can be done by turning the object around a few times while filming the shadow. Then we measure the flat field, which is a light the detector measures when there is no shadow, and the dark field, which is a background light measured when the light is turned off. We also did a scan of a non-transparent object, a 3D printed black chess piece from one of my previous videos, go check it out, to see what our program would make out of this. On the right you can see the 3D model we obtained from the bottle, after putting in all the variables and running the code. On the left of the screen you can see what the code looks like. This piece of the code transforms the image at an angle to a straight image, as if the wall would be the detector. And here the relevant parts of the video are selected and saved. This script determines how much the object rotates each frame by measuring how many frames a full rotation takes. And this script is the actual reconstruction of the 3D image. Here we load in all the data. Remember the dark field image we measured? This background light is removed here from the scan. These are all the variables. For example, VC, which is the height of the light source in pixels, which we determined by looking at the image of the measuring tape. And in this part of the code we use a math magic mentioned above to solve the system of linear equations and reconstruct the actual 3D image. This is the image we got from the chess piece. It turned out quite good, but the middle is actually imagined by the program in a sense because our visible light can't penetrate the plastic in comparison with the model from the X-ray CT scan which is an almost exact model even from the inside. Thanks for watching everyone. This video took quite some time to make so consider subscribing if you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.